Hi and welcome to the MyGo YouTube channel. My name is Shane, the founder of MyGo. Today we're going to look at why are plants green and if they are green, does green light get absorbed by plants and does it generate uh, photosynthesis and growth? So the first thing to look at is why are plants green in the first place? Unfortunately, the short answer is we simply don't know. There, have, there are many theories as to why chlorophyll, uh, chloroplasts and chlorophyll, which is a green pigment, is the most prominent in nature today. Over 99% of plant species use chlorophyll to photosynthesize and therefore most plants are green. But why? As I said, there are a number of theories. People have different uh, suggestions as to why chlorophyll uh, may be green and may be the successful pigment. The one that uh, I think it appeals to me most of all anyway, I think makes most sense, is that in the early oceans that there were uh, early organisms uh, which were in the ocean which were absorbing the uh, green light and allowing, so they were purple in colour, absorbing green light and allowing the uh, blue and red light to pass them into the lower depths of the ocean and that chlorophyll developed there and became successful there and you know it, it has it has a higher level of efficiency once it takes in the light it has a higher conversion efficiency then of generating glucose which is the, the uh, material used for plants to grow the fuel um, so that chlorophyll, once then there be a competition came about between different types, that chlorophyll was the most successful. But nobody knows, I don't know, nobody knows, and there's no definitive evidence uh, one way or the other. So we really have to accept that the reason our plants are green is because if you look down to the inner structure of the leaves or the branches or whatever we're looking at, at the inner, inside that plant, there are lots of little cells and these are chloroplast cells which have a green chlorophyll pigment and because that's the predominant um, element in the plant that the plant then has a green appearance. This can vary of course you could have lighter green or darker greens and minty greens and different shades uh, and this also suggests that the light being reflected off is not a pure simple green that it is reflecting a little uh, back a little bit more than green. And this is correct. So a little experiment I did. I've taken our plant here and a broad spectrum of light. In fact, I used the sunlight. And I took it outside and used a spectroradiometer or a Sensitec passport. And I've taken a measurement of the light going down onto the plant, where it impacts the plant. And then I took a reverse measurement to detect the colour of light which is being reflected back off. And it's very interesting to see that the reflected light is predominantly green but not all green. So it's about 60% of the reflected light off a, a leaf is green and it's just showing you that some of the green gets reflected and some of the uh, red and blue does also. Now the level of green that's reflected is far less than is impacting the plant. So the plant is definitely absorbing green light. So we looked at the plant, now let's look at the light source. In this case we're going to use the sun as our example. We may remember back to school days that you know, light is made up of uh, visible light which is the same as the light that plants absorb. So visible light spectrum is the same as the power spectrum for plants and that spectrum the visible spectrum is in wavelength terms between 400 and 700 nanometers and in plain speak that means from a deep blue or purple all the way up to a red, dark red. And if you look at the sunlight spectrum as measured outside here, outside our workshop, you can see that all of the frequencies of light, all of the colours of light are present in the sun spectrum. In large order so it's not showing a much larger proportion of one type of light to another. If we look close up on a leaf we can see that inside the leaf 
the chlorophyll molecules are distributed evenly around that leaf. However, when the red, blue and green photons, these different colours of light, hit the leaf, there are slightly different mechanisms happen. So within the first one-fifth of the leaf thickness, about 80% of the photons are absorbed, the blue and red ones. So there's a small amount of reflection of the blue and red, but the majority, majority of them are absorbed uh, in the first one-fifth of the leaf thickness. The green light, however, some of it will be reflected off the surface, as evidenced by our earlier test, but some of it also penetrates down through the plant, so it either hits off a chlorophyll molecule and is reflected back down further in, or just simply penetrates and is only absorbed deeper. The benefit of this is that some of that green light will actually go through the leaf, lower in the leaves or right through the leaves into the lower parts of the plant canopy. And it means where the leaf is absorbing a very high amount of photons, so where the light intensity is highest, it can actually deflect and redistribute some of the photons, the green ones, into other parts of the plant and even out that uh, photon absorption. That's a very, very useful part of your light recipe to use on, uh, when growing plants is to have green incorporated in it because it will help the plant absorb the whole plant absorb more photons uh, and therefore generate uh, more photosynthesis and more growth and higher yield. So you may listening to that explanation and saying that's all well and good, uh, theory is fine but You've seen probably seen lots of the charts going around with showing a light spectrum with chlorophyll A and B, and it appears that these uh, molecules only absorb blue and red light uh, when tested. Just to explain first of all how those experiments were done, they were done some time ago. What they do is they t would take the leaf or part of the plant and they would mash it up basically and dissolve it into an alcohol and put it in a beaker. And in a lab situation, they would shine narrow spectrums of light, so you know, a, a, a broad, a narrow spectrum of, for example, blue light, into that jar, and they measure the level of reaction, so the amount of CO2 that is absorbed and oxygen that is released, and they, they, uh, they measure the reaction in that way. More recent search research, and it's called whole plant research, and this is far closer to what we would think of a normal circumstance, is to take a plant, a complete plant, and to put it into a chamber or a growing room, uh, and put it under a single frequency of light, or a relatively narrow range of light, so green light, for example, and to see does the green light grow the plant in isolation when everything else is the same. And also comparing the growth under green light in comparison to red and blue and uh, a broad spectrum with mixed colours in it. So recent research I've, I've highlighted in some of the previous videos from the University of Utah State shows that they did this. They did this for a variety of plants with a mix of light frequencies and what they discovered was that green does indeed cause photosynthesis. It is not as efficient as red, for example, in terms of generating photosynthesis, but when mixed together, so the blue, the green, and the red are mixed together in similar proportions to the sun, you get the best mixture of high growth rate, so a high level of photosynthesis, but also a proper development of the plant. So you get, you know, it comes out with the right number of leaves, the right size of leaves, the right, um, height uh, in terms of the distances between branches, the internodal distances are maintained at a, a good level. So I hope this has helped you to uh, better understand the concept of green light for growing. Just to summarize over it again, you know, we, we one third of sunlight is green. Um, green light generally is tested to be uh, at least 80% photosynthetically efficient, blue being less than that, red being a bit more. 
and that green light is very beneficial in terms of growing in particular for the uh, penetration effect so remembering that the green light some of it does get reflected off the leaf but often those photons are photosynthesized later on as they um, bounce their way down uh, into the canopy. Just as a backup to some of the stuff I've been saying here I did a very interesting interview with a uh, very prominent person in the um, in this area horticultural lighting his name is Dr. Bruce Bugby he is uh, a professor in Utah State uh, uh, sorry a doctor in Utah State University and has released lots of um, university papers on this topic I did an interview with him recently which there's a link here you'll see it above and uh, I've just extracted the elements about green light and you're just going to hear them now. So here's over to Bruce Bugby and I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Under controls, under a number of different uh, light spectrums or recipes, and you studied the different char growth characteristics of those plants under the different light recipes. The question is, did you find an optimum light spectrum for plants? There, there's not a single optimum, um, but taking that specific study, one of the things we found was green, green photons are fine. They, people thought, oh my, the green photons aren't used as efficiently as other photons. No, they are. When you have a plant canopy and overlapping leaves, the green photons penetrate better. And that penetration really helps the plants because the lower leaves still get light. If you have red and blue photons only, the, the lower leaves don't get any light and they start to die. So green photons were helpful. That was one of the findings. Uh, In terms of the um, green proportions then, so we're, we're looking at uh, blue 5 to 10 sort of percent range. We want to maximize the amount of red uh, because it's photosynthetically efficient. Uh, so in turn, we're left. We're we're we're, and, and, but we're saying that green has the benefit. I believe that uh, blue, green, and red will perform better than blue and red only in most plants from a photosynthetic efficiency point of view. So some people have said, "Look, give me an optimum spectrum, and I draw something." And they said, "Well, that looks just like sunlight." <laughs> yeah. The, the color the plants have evolved to use sunlight. There's two questions here. One, what colors result in best plant growth? And two, which ones are the most economical? Because green light might be fine, but there are no efficient green LEDs. But we need green light to be able to see the plants. So we add the green light in, even though it's less efficient, we add it in so we can see the plants and diagnose them better. Um, we've done a lot of studies with blue and red, and oh, I hate it. I mean, you can't see any abnormalities in the plants. The, the phrase I use is in some old Chinese proverb. It said, the best fertilizer is the footsteps of the farmer. Well, if, if you got purple LEDs and the plants look black, those footsteps of the farmer aren't working for you. You need to be able to see. So we add green light so we can see the plants and study and make sure they're growing right. And, 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 and simply from, a, so from a, a photo, forgetting for a moment the cost of creating those different frequency photons or different colored photons, if the cost in, in theory was, uh, if you could make believe that they were all the same, would it be uh, preferable to have an element of green with the blue and red for other reasons. Absolutely, yeah. What would those reasons be? Well, there's the physiological reason that they penetrate better into canopies. So there's a direct physiological benefit. And, and can I ask, that, that mechanism for, for that it penetrates, that it gets further, is it because it reflects off leaves and bounces in further, or is it because it goes through them? It, it does both. When a photon hits a leaf, it rattles around, you know, and sometimes it bounces down and sometimes it bounces up. 
So it is true that some of those photons bounce up and they're lost, but the reflection of green photons, they're still 90% absorbed, maybe 80% absorbed. It's not like they're wildly reflected. But it's true, a few do bounce up and those are lost. So the green is less captured, but it's that reduction in radiation capture is not as big as most people think. The green is still fundamentally in a canopy, the green photons are still 90% captured. And when you say canopy penetration, so, you know, if you were to look at a plant, an individual plant, and you're looking to its leaf coverage, so if one leaf is getting a much higher level intensity than another, that it is less efficient at the higher intensity and it's somehow that by sharing it amongst other leaves that the plant overall benefits. Yes, it does help to even it out more among all the leaves. And that's what you want. You want all the leaves to be healthy, not just the top layer. Okay, okay, very interesting. Now, having said that, there's no green LEDs, but white LEDs have lots of green. That's the dominant color in a white LED. So HPS, which has been proven over years, has about 40% green, I think. Lots of green, that's right, that's right. I will divulge that to my colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you.